Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome again to the new lecture of this course fundamentals and applications of dielectric ceramics. So let us just briefly recap what we did in the last class. So in the last class we looked at the differences between piezoelectrics and piezo, pyro and ferroelectrics and the underlying basis was crystallographic basis. So as we said that uh, a piezoelectric material is something which is non centrosymmetric uh, except you know 4, 3, 2 all the non centrosymmetric point groups are piezoelectric and then pyroelectrics are those which are non center symmetric plus they have a unique polar axis as a result they have a spontaneous polarization and then ferroelectrics are which are non center symmetric plus unique polar axis plus reversibility of polar axis so as a result you know uh, you can look at the Venn diagram where piezoelectric is the biggest class of non centrosymmetric materials. Some of the piezoelectrics are also pyroelectrics, and some of the pyroelectrics are ferroelectrics. So, ferroelectrics is the most restrictive class of materials. So, out of these 21, um, out of these uh, 21 minus 432 that is the point group which are non centrosymmetric so 21 pgs except 432 and then here you have uh, 10 of them and here less than 10 okay so this is what we did and we also looked at then the piezoelectric tensor so piezoelectric effect is is basically coupling between mechanical and electrical response. So, by mechanical we mean it is mostly elastic in nature, okay. it is elastic in nature and this is, so we have a direct piezoelectric effect, in direct piezoelectric effect you have charge density uh, produced as an outcome of uh, applied electric field, sorry applied stress not electric field. Okay. So, this is the direct piezoelectric coefficient whose un units are in coulomb per Newton and then we have indirect effect where we relate the strain with respect to D uh, K i j and your stimuli is basically the electric field and this is your indirect coefficient which is uh, essentially in meter per volt all right and this is strain and uh, so as a result you can see that this is a this so now if you look at this d i j k this is a third rank tensor right a third rank tensor will have 3 to power 3 which means 27 components but since we know that stress and strain are symmetrical tensors, so as a result you have x i j is equal to x j i and a small x i j being equal to small j x j i. So as a result when you expand it, so d i j can be expanded in the form of matrix. So let us say d 1, uh, so initially you will start with d 1 1, then you can go to d 1 2 1 and so on and so forth. 
so you write for d211 and then similarly d311 and so on so when you do the matrix expansion you can see that uh, so if you have d i j k this will be equivalent to d i k j okay so as a result uh, because of because of this correlation between the stress and strain you will reduce the number of components to so basically something like d123 will be equal to d132 right Same, so all these components will become equal so we can say that total number of components reduced from 27 to 18 so this is what and they can further be reduced by crystal symmetry depending upon the type of crystal and so on and so forth so essentially and we also looked at the examples of materials so examples such as you know silicon oxide is the best known one of the best known and simple piezoelectric then you also have zinc oxide then you know materials which are ferroelectric are always uh, so things like pzt or pbtio3 or batio3 these are all ferroelectric which are naturally piezoelectric and then of course the polymeric materials like pvdf polyvinylidene fluoride CH2, CF2, they based materials, they are also uh, piezoelectric in nature by the virtue of being ferroelectric in nature. Now let us move towards what we call as pyroelectric materials. Pyroelectric effect. So pyroelectric effect as we say that basically pyro means this term pyro will mean it is related to temperature and electric will mean it is related to electric field. So basically pyroelectric effect is nothing but coupling between thermal and electrical parameters. Okay. So as we said that the requirement for a pyroelectric material is that it should be non centrosymmetric and it has a polarization. So when this pyroelectric material is subjected to a temperature difference delta T as a result it has certain charge density change in you can say since it is polar it will always have charge density right uh, but as you change the temperature there is a change in uh, charge density so when you apply a gradient delta T which means it results in change in delta P s so change in the P s which is delta P s and this delta P s is nothing but the you can say surface charge density that you have induced as a result of making temperature change. So we can correlate a value called as pyroelectric coefficient which is let us say small p i and this small p i is nothing but change of p s i which is a vector with respect to temperature. So this is pyroelectric coefficient P i which is del P s i divided by del T where P s is the spontaneous polarization and we know that it is a vector right. It has a unit of coulomb per meter square so as a result P i will have unit of uh, coulomb meter per meter square per Kelvin and this is also a vector. Okay. Now, alternatively you can also write that induced charge density let us say d i this is related to delta t and this is related to delta t by small p i and this is nothing but delta p s i right the change in the uh, spontaneous polarization that you observe upon uh, P s i uh, upon applying a thermal gradient. So these materials as we said they are non centrosymmetric necessarily non centrosymmetric and necessarily polar. Okay. So basically all the ferroelectric materials are uh, pyroelectric materials and most of the commercially, commercially available pyro, pyroelectric materials are nothing but ferroelectrics in themselves. So now let us move to another effect which is uh, which may be which you must you must know is called as electro 
restriction okay electrostriction is very much similar to piezoelectric effect except that electrostriction and it's basically you can say coupling between electrostriction right to so coupling between you can say it's strain and and electric field same as piezoelectric effect except that piezoelectric effect occurs in non centrosymmetric materials whereas electrostriction occurs in all dielectric materials irrespective of symmetry so it's it's an effect that occurs in all dielectrics uh, irrespective of symmetry so this is where when you make piezoelectric measurement it is important to distinguish between what you are seeing as electrostrictive effect and the purely piezoelectric effect and uh, this so the electrostrictive strain that is generated by applying an electric field is depicted as xij this is electrostriction electro strictive strain this is depicted as xij is equal to electrostriction coefficient mij kl into ek into el it's a vector so you can't write ekl uh, it will become a tensor so you have to write ek and el so you can see that this is a fourth rank tensor okay and uh, this is basically uh, electrostrictive coefficient all right so you can also write in terms of uh, polarization so we know that polarization is related to electric field by susceptibility right p is equal to chi into uh, e so if you can do that Uh, transform then alternatively we can say x i j can be written as q uh, i j k l into p k p l where these are the polarization vectors so instead of writing in terms of electric field vectors you can also write them in terms of polarization vectors and these polarization vectors are related to uh, so polarization vectors are related to electric field by susceptibility right because we know that susceptibility is nothing but p divided by epsilon not e right so basically the proportionality constant will be susceptibility so you can sort of write this as m can be related to q as m i j let's say m n is equal to chi k m into chi ln into q i j k l so this will be the electrostrictivist effect so we are not going to get get into details of electrostriction but basically it is something which is present in all the materials and uh, it can be present in in addition to piezo uh, electric effect in the materials okay and sometimes uh, uh, piezo electric effect in ferroelectrics may also be interpreted and may also be explained as sort of uh, electrostriction which is based on spontaneous polarization so there is a possibility that polarization that is present in the material that gives rise to electrostriction which is manifested in the form of uh, piezoelectric effect so this is basically a brief uh, uh, introduction to the uh, tensor notation of these uh, typical properties which are so what we have looked is looked at is we have looked at dielectric properties okay we have looked at uh, elastic properties and we have looked at piezoelectric properties and we have looked at pyroelectric properties and finally we looked at electro striction 
So, these are all basically vectorial tensorial properties which are related to the stimuli which could be you know stress or it could be uh, the electric field, it could be um, de delta t temperature difference. So, basically we have these proportionality parameters which are in the form of stiffness, in the form of uh, susceptibility, in the form of piezoelectric coefficient, in the form of uh, pyroelectric coefficient or in the form of electrostriction coefficient which are all uh, you know second rank, third rank or fourth rank tensors depending upon the properties they, they correlate. Now, let us do a little bit analysis of these uh, properties in terms of uh, thermodynamics. Okay. So, basically what we are what we want to now look at is how these properties are correlated to each other because because we have seen you know when you have a thermal gradient you have a polarization change change in polarization will change lead to change in the electric field as a result you will have a electrostatic you 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 may have strain so you know all these thermal properties electrical properties elastic properties they are all correlated to each other so we must understand the coupling between these properties so coupling between electrical mechanical and by mechanical we mean mean elastic okay and thermal and for this we will establish what we call as a first thermodynamic basis okay so uh, i mean we have seen that for example in a piezoelectric effect you have direct piezoelectric effect right when you apply your stress and you get a response in terms of change in uh, you can have polarization for example induced polarization similarly in the in the in the converse effect when you apply electric field you will get strain right and this uh, um, and then you pyroelectric materials when you apply delta t you get delta delta p which is nothing but d so and it is important because these properties are correlated to each other we need to evolve formalisms so that they are useful in making us understand how experimental determination has to be done so for example when you make piezoelectric measurement let's say you make piezoelectric material for a free material okay free material means it is ready to expand contract in other directions freely there is no external constraint on it but let's say so this is a free material okay but let's say you have a material in this form you have a substrate which is let's say silicon okay on the silicon i have put a layer of let's say uh, zinc oxide all right now in this case this is this becomes a constrained media right because the strain in the thin film is going to arise as a result of clamping with the substrate because they are atomically bonded with respect to each other. So, in this case when you apply electric field you have a strains of different kind they are all free strains whereas the strains that are generated in this case are going to be determined by boundary conditions how the material is clamped with respect to substrates. So, as a result it is important to understand the effect of various variables on the calculation of these parameters so that we exactly decouple various effects for example whether the piezoelectric strain is because of stress only or is it also because of is it does it also have a contribution from substrate induced strain or because of differences in coefficient thermal expansion between film and the substrate and so on and so forth so basically uh, you would like to uh, decouple these effects and to decouple these effects and understand them and also it also it also allows you to choose parameters which parameters to allow which parameters to uh, which parameters can be allowed to change and which parameters should be kept constant okay so that is what it helps us to determine a formalism in in terms of let's say so basically these are all thermodynamic expressions so thermodynamics i'm sure you are you have general knowledge of uh,
So basically you are aware of terms, I assume that you are aware of terms such as G which is Gibbs free energy, U is given as internal energy, right? S is given as entropy and H is given as enthalpy. Okay, these are certain thermodynamic parameters and we all know that you know J G is equal to H minus T S or it could be equal to uh, alternative form is uh, if it is a constant volume process then it could be U minus T S uh, depending upon where you are looking at constant pressure or constant volume. So, you can have various scenarios, but uh, we are not going to get into thermodynamic discussions, but I hope that you know if you do not know thermodynamics then I would like I would like you to go to any basic books on on thermodynamics there are plenty of books. For example, you can read this uh, uh, thermodynamics of materials by Gaskell. There is a book by uh, thermodynamics by Lupus. Then you can also look at some classical thermodynamics. So, thermodynamics of materials is slightly different as compared to thermodynamics of mechanical systems like engines etcetera. So, but the terminology remains the same. So, concept of entropy, free energy, enthalpy that remains the same. So, you can go through any basic books on thermodynamics if you are not aware of the thermodynamical parameters. So, let us say, so thermodynamics are three laws as we know first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics and third law of thermodynamics. So, using the using first and second law of thermodynamics, we can write that uh, a reversible let us say U is internal energy. So, you have a consider a, so you have a elastic dielectric okay. which is subjected to let us say Chinese strain. So, it experiences a tiny strain let us say d x, it experiences a dielectric displacement d d okay. and as a result and it also has a change in entropy. which is d s. So, for such a system the change in the reversible change in the, uh, so we can write the reversible change in the um, internal energy of this system can be written as d u is T d s plus x i j into d small x i j plus e i d d i. So, this is the strain, this is the change in the um, change in the dielectric displacement and this is the change in the entropy where T is the temperature, x is the capital X i j is stress and e i is the electric field. So, most of our measurements as we see we although we make temperature dependent measurements, but the at each temperature certain measurements are made. So, most of the measurements that we make electrical measurements or dielectric measurements they are all isothermal in nature. So, and uh, so temperature is generally kept as uh, constant whereas, other variables are you can have electric field or you might apply change in stress. So, these are other these are the variables that you these are the parameters that you independently vary. So, as a result the independent variables that we have in the first. So, in this case the first slide 
the independent variables is so, so what are the variables here? The independent variables are s, x i j and d i. So, but however, since the measurements are made in the form of by keeping uh, electrical uh, electric field as a uh, variable or stress as a variable, temperature is kept constant, but it could also be a variable. So, we generally make our measurements in this fashion, we would like to change these parameters. So, right now we have a set of parameters uh, entropy, strain and dielectric displacement. We would like to transform them to electric field, stress and temperature and these are all related to each other. So, they are not sort of uh, uh, independent of each other. So, for this what we call as we make a transformation in the thermodynamic parameters and this is basically done by what we call as legendary transformation. So, legendary transformation which uh, if you have done basic engineering mathematics you would know what legendary transformation is. So, as a result when you apply this transformation that free energy function free energy is G basically Gibbs free energy function can be written as G is equal to U minus T s minus capital X i j small x i j minus E i d i. Okay. This is capital G. Now, if you want to look at the differential of G that is the free energy change. So, d G will be equal to d u minus T d s minus S d t minus x i j d of small x i j minus of a small x i j d of x i j minus of E i d d i minus of d i into d E i right. So, this is the free energy function that I get in the form of all the parameters. So, we have we include this is the internal energy and these are the terms which lead to change in the uh, these are thermodynamic changes right. So, so basically this is the entropy term and you can take rest of the terms u minus this is the next term which is basically the net internal energy you can say. So, now if you do the subtraction of d u we know what d u is this is d u term. So, we when you subtract d u here you will get rid of T d s you will get rid of you will get rid of this term d x i j and you will get this, get the term consisting of d d i. So, what we will get is basically d g will be equal to minus of s d t minus of small x i j capital d of capital x i j minus this is i j and then minus of d i into small d e i. This is what we, we will get in terms of the free change in free energy. So, the change in free energy is related to minus of s d t minus of small x i j differential of capital X i j minus of d i into change in electric field. So, now we have stated the change in free energy in the form of parameters that we vary okay. and from this we will calculate the properties independently. So, we, we have run out of time now we will stop here. What we have done is basically we have looked at the pyroelectric properties in this lecture and also we have started a thermodynamic basis to understand the properties and before we get into material applications and some other features. Thank you very much.